All right, tribe, let's get into it. These are my Airbnb accommodations. We're going to deep dive into this. And yes, I did just pay $86.73 for three days. And here's the house rules, which was very reasonable. Check in after 3, 12 o'clock. Uh, Self-check-in, smart lock, two guests maximum, no pets. Um, and then it's continued on, no parties, no com no commercial photography, no smoking, additional rules, blah, blah, blah. So I was very much so into a, having a conversation, and you should too, with your Airbnb host, making sure that it had equipment to cook because I did want to cook. And then like the transportation, any issues. So we'll talk about that later. But remember, I talked about transportation here. So yeah, I was getting a lot of good feedback, figure out what I wanted to do. We're talking about the beach. So I definitely wanted to put that into my things to do because that's my things to do. Then I wanted to go to the grocery store, get some food and cook in my Airbnb. So here we go. This is where we left off. Yeah. Tell them I sent yeah, the cash. So, as the taxi drops me off, you come straight into the Airbnb. As you can see, it's an open floor plan, one floor only efficiency bungalow. I think I love that and love saying that. I love that big mirror that I had that I could look and see what I was doing before I went out in the streets. This TV, it works, and I did watch a couple of things. And I like to watch things in different countries because I want to see what, you know, language they speak, what they're talking about, blah, blah, blah. So let's go into the room. Yes, this was a queen bed with a desk and a window. I have to show you that later because that was a nice little view. And then the bathroom, of course, is always a plus. It had a little closet over here to the side. I could hang stuff in if I wanted to. But getting back to this bathroom, yes, it had the shower heads for the gods, two of them. It made a great difference. I appreciate the shower tremendously trust me and uh had towels included and i you know in foreign countries they only use the big big towels they don't have washcloths so you know i had to accommodate myself for that but you see that shower head it made a difference early in the morning before i got up to go do what i needed to do now i just wanted to give you another view when i'm inside the bungalow looking into the kitchen area and how it looks from that perspective so in saying that, let's go into the kitchen. Let's see what we're dealing with in here. <laughs> I love this little gas stove. I really do. Came in handy. It was so efficient. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. And, you know, it cooked well. But I wish it could have cooked on lower temperatures. It just kind of stayed a little medium high. Yes, and it had an oven. I didn't use it, but it worked. And, ah, uh, the cupboards are bare, people. I had to buy my own seasonings and oils or whatever that I want to use. There was some there, but I wasn't going to just use all and not leave none. So, you know, I'm being nosy, looking through everything, seeing what I got to work with. See, there's a couple of pots and pans in here, some spoons and stuff as far as cutlery. And then I got some bowls and some juice uh, glasses. Let's see what's in here. Oh, okay, some more like plates and, and uh, mugs and stuff for tea or coffee. Now the refrigerator, uh-huh, it's bare butt naked empty, but I'm gonna put some things in there. And that was part of the fun of having a Airbnb private efficiency where I can buy my own food and make sure everything works. Now looking underneath, not so bad. There's where the water and stuff is taken care of, trash is down there. Then that's where actually the gas tank is that's hooked to the stove. So that's pretty neat, it's, it's really efficient. And uh, got a couple of snacks on the counter with some water. I thought that was a nice little ad. Um, and just pretty much panning around the living room from the kitchen area so you can see it from that perspective. We're going to show you all 360 angles. Yes. You see how that's looking over there, a little dining area to sit and eat at. Okay. And then where the door is, they have the remote for the fan and everything like that. So now going outside, I wanted to show you that it was gated. Yes, it is gated. As soon as you come in to yourself, you have the key. No one can get in. And then look at this beautiful little sit-out space. It's got a little sink, so you can tell this is a repurposed space, which I love the fact of what they did with it. Uh, you can see overhead is nice, and you can see the stars, the moons, or just nothing at all. Just look up at the pretty beautiful sky at night, which I did on um, one night, and you'll get to see that as well. So get this pretty panoramic view of this outside seating area. I'm gonna step outside 
and just give you a up and down the street look of you know what the neighborhood looks like how it's looking in the middle of the day because this was around like three in the afternoon so this is how it's looking around three in the afternoon pretty quiet and then just looking at this whole outside area it just made me appreciate more you know just the fact that i had this all to myself get some drinks cook some food come out here and just sit down in the morning just you know sit down maybe do a live i don't know now getting back into it and let me tell you how i felt about this so far good morning from dr the dominican republic of all places i bet you never thought i'd come here huh but here i am here so there's so many good things about it but the thing is when I'm asking what to do or whatever, nobody's responding. So did you really come or did, was you just saying you can't? I don't know. But anywho, um, let's see. Let me give a play-by-play -play of what I've um, experienced thus far. So thus far, let's see the flight. Let's start with the flight and leaving Vegas. Again, I had to lay over in my own city, which was crazy, but... There was something going on with the plane and they had to get that right. So once they got that right, then we was able to board. And once we boarded and I had a window seat, initially I had a aisle seat and I want to thank the guy who gave the seat up so that I could have a window seat to spread my leg because as you know, I injured my knee and it is painful, but I'm pushing through just fine. So then, let me set myself more. So then, let's see, we got, yeah, we left Vegas, and then I landed in Orlando International Airport. We got in Orlando, I don't even like, I don't like the way this lighting is over my head. Maybe I'm gonna change positions right quick. <laughs> Okay, boom. Okay, so then we was in Orlando. Orlando's layover. That's why I did my little <laughs> dance video and all that stuff. But I was going to do better, but my leg is hurting, so it's kind of hard to do it. Anywho, in Orlando, it was a decent little food court. And I kind of showed you the airport where a lot of people were gathering. That was pretty cool. Um, let's see, in Orlando, the airport was good. I liked the airport. Um, people were helpful. I do wheelchair, wheelchair assist, so that was, um, decent. And I, I'm going to do a whole video on wheelchair assist and why you should use it if you have any type of disabilities or handicaps or issues walking. Then... We got on the flight, and the flight was really easy. A couple of bumps, turbulence, but for the most part, it was pretty decent. Once we landed, now this was the hardest part. I'm going to tell you this about DR. So, good morning. I'm about to make me some coffee. Let's see what they got to make some coffee with. Ooh, good old school percolator. I'm going to see this go to work. Put this down and get started. Okay, y'all, let's do it here. Good morning. So, thank goodness I know how to use an old school percolator. And it's got this bottom right here. And what you can do is you can put this on the top of the stove. But since I'm not sure about how hot it can get, I don't know. I think I can put this on the stove. You finna try? <laughs> All right, so I got... Dominican style, we got coffee, we got brown sugar. Almost like the Jamaicans, so let's get me and let's see what, 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 what we can do. All right, so for certain, I know I wanna put the coffee in here. Come to find out, I didn't know how to use that percolator, but I learned and I'm gonna have a whole little uh, how to use the percolator video attached to this so just wait for it it's coming you live you learn and you learn to make coffee in the dominican republic just like that 
But what's funny is I didn't know how to use it, but I learned in the end. And I'm going to show you. And yeah, let's all get a little kick out of this. <laughs> it is funny. And it's going to go to the bottom. And it's just going to be some good old coffee. I can get one of these, like, for real. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. So, I'm going to put the water in the top. Mm. I'm not going to use local water. I'm going to use bottled water. We're in um, the Hispanic country on the border, and I think this is what I need to use. Yeah. So, hopefully this works. Let's try it. Because I use this wrong, now I have to pour it. You're supposed to put the water in the bottom, and then it's supposed to filter all the way to the top, and it's supposed to be clear. I'll do that tomorrow. I promise. I'll do that. So, I have my own little filter thing to do. And make sure I get my coffee. Yeah. Well, 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 guess what made the trip? You best believe it. My infused cookies every time, because... I'm not going to be stressed on no trip. Not at all. Not for no reason. And I figured that it's going to be a long day. So why not relax first? Let's eat so some cookies and coffee. drink some coffee. And I'm just going to have some brown sugar with it. So now I'm about to eat my cookies and I'm checking on the situation with the beach, getting ready, put my little beach outfit on. Yes, Miss Girl, Miss the Man, I am ready to go to the beach and just be a beach bum for the day. But here comes the issue. All right, so I find out where Baiba Beach is, the one that he said is a really good beach to go to. And then I also find out exactly how much it costs to go there. In US dollars, that's about like two bucks honestly give or take so i was like okay let me pay this little change so boom first thing i get is a message from an uber driver saying that um he wants me to pay a certain amount i'm like i already paid and then i see that he's got the trip is about 11 minutes away so i'm excited getting my towel and everything together um ready to go to the beach then he cancels that trip i get another message and then he says that he has issues with the car all of a sudden because I wouldn't pay. But then I get a phone call. So somebody has gotten my number in DR about the same making a payment outside of Uber. All right. So I'm trying to clarify because I'm figuring that's what's going on. But I'm just not sure that's what's going on. And I'm pretty much spelling it out. So then this next person, because I let that other person go, and he still wants me to pay more after I've paid Uber. So then he cancels as well. And at this point, I'm starting to get the picture. If you're not paying more than Uber is charging after you pay Uber to any one of these drivers, they're not going to come and pick you up. They're going to have some people call you, just violate you on all levels and uber is aware of this don't get me wrong as you can see this is in the uber app that i am texting and nobody is stopping this conversation nobody is 
um, putting any red flags up for the drivers. This is just a consistent practice with Uber in the Dominican Republic and it's absolutely awful. So at this point, I decide I am going to head out in the streets and see if either I can catch a taxi to the beach or go get me some food to eat or just go see what it's about in reference to transportation. So now I'm stepping out. Yes, into the city, into La Romana, Dominican Republic, which I know no one. Transportation has already let me down, but me being a soldier and knowing how to keep my bearings and making sure I'm safe at all times, I trusted the process. Because at the end of the day, baby, I'm gonna do what I gotta do and I'm gonna get where I need to be. And nobody or nothing is gonna stop me and I'm gonna make sure I'm safe in doing it and I'm gonna show you the safest way to do it. So. I'm walking up and down this street because I've already mapped out how to get to the actual Mercado or the market, the grocery store to actually get food. So now I'm saying to myself, my first thing is get food. If I don't get to the beach first or if I don't Take get to the beach today, the that's okay. Get I still have another day feet. that I can Take still get to the principal. beach. So here's no, you know, harm, no foul. I'm taking my time, you know, checking out the scenery, seeing that there's a lot of people. And I love this about, you know, going out instead of staying in the resorts because you really get to see how people are living. Yes, most people have transportation in DR, but if you're a foreigner coming into DR, they're going to get you with so that transportation. As you can see, pretty chill neighborhood. Nobody's bothering me about nothing. And I'm just, you know, taking a nice stroll. Maybe I may find some other way to get to the beach, but it's raining today, so it's not a big deal if I don't get to go today. See you guys soon. Let me show you where I'm at. See? Yeah. So, join me for the next episode of Do I Get the Hell Out of La Romana? Do I Ever Get Transportation? Does Uber really suck that bad? Yes, they do. Did I get to the grocery store? Did anybody bother me? Did anybody um, harass me for money or sex or anything else? Keep watching. I swear, this is a great vlog and I am just showing you all the meat and potatoes in reference to Dominican Republic. See you next time.